so time for a small Warhammer epic scenario that apparently has the power to break friendships. Let's talk through some real people's reactions to a common area of contention, and where you might fall on the spectrum of potential reactions. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd place one area of the 40k game under the microscope, perhaps one of the areas that's most likely to trigger bad feelings for one player or another. It's basically a small social scenario that I asked for a whole bunch of real opinions from on a YouTube post the other day, and we'll discuss how people can choose to react to it, their reasons for doing so, and perhaps some of the possible consequences of choosing to go one way or the other. The scenario is basically a classic gotcha type moment in 40k, and I think pretty much the most archetypical one is Space Marines using all specs can to kill an enemy unit, and it's one of the clearest examples of one that might induce the opponent to react something along the lines of, I wouldn't have made that move if I'd known that you could do that. In this scenario, you're playing as the Space Marines, your opponent's playing Drukhari, they have a few scourges swooped down from the skies out of reserve, fairly fragile ranged infantry that can pack a massive punch when they shoot things, but they'll get killed very easily to some return fire, the Drukhari player presumably not knowing or forgetting that your Space Marines have all spec scan, puts them down within 12 inches of a big shooting unit, say a tooled up unit of Devastators, and then you have the options of the Space Marines to spend two command points on a stratagem to kind of intercept them, have them immediately shoot the unit that came in from reserve, and basically obliterate the fragile scourges before they even get to strike, making the manoeuvre to put them there a really bad one. The question I asked people on the post was, do you warn them that you have the stratagem, or aim to warn them about it pre-game, or just play fully rules as written, sit back and obliterate the unit, and don't worry about how well informed the opponent was. It's basically a classic gotcha move in 40k, definitely one big criticism of 9th edition right now, there's an absolute ton of rules in every single codex, lots of stratagems and plenty more beside, just far too many rules for the vast majority to keep aware of for the majority of factions unless they play ridiculously regularly at a top level. A lot of rules trigger kind of rarely but can be pretty game changing when they happen, so I thought it just might be interesting to see people's responses to when this comes up in game, and a bit of insight as to why they choose to do what they do. With that in mind, I went through that community post and tallied up the various different responses. There was a little bit of overlap between some of the categories, but broadly speaking, it typically broke down into some people never wanting to warn them, some people always wanting to warn them, a bunch of people hoping to talk through the options pre-game, and a very hefty chunk of people saying it would depend on the context for them, depending on exactly what sort of game they're playing, who their opponent was, or perhaps other things besides. Starting out at the bottom, with perhaps the single most sporting group on the list, 36% of people said that they would always warn them at the time, though within that category a fair few people said that they wouldn't actually spell it out word for word, they might just give a bit of a vague hint as to why the opponent shouldn't do that. I think a lot of people responded this way just because of the general criticism of the bloat of the game, but there were quite a few justifications for why they'd want to inform their opponent. Some people said that they'd rather win by a better generalship, and not just win a game because their opponent was misinformed and made one obviously stupid move. I certainly can relate to that, I think a victory would feel just a little bit on the hollow side if it was just due to one mess up on your opponent's side and otherwise they would have won. Someone said 40k has got too many small variations of a lot of different similar rules, so you can't just memorise one thing for every single codex. For example, even within intercept rules, some of them exist as stratagems or bits of war gear, and a lot of the stratagems just work very slightly differently. A fair few armies have an intercept rule that goes out to 18 inches, beyond the normal 12, and some can do it with infantry and core units, some factions can just do it with everything. There was the opinion that 40k is not really supposed to be a game of hidden information, where your opponent isn't really supposed to know what's going on with your army, and try to let them know as little about your codex as possible until you spring some traps. A lot of people would expect the same courtesy for them, or it just feels really unsatisfying for both players in general, and getting an in-game advantage just isn't really worth having the game swung like that. I did find it kind of interesting that people who go for a bit of a halfway house, try not to actually say, don't put your unit there, or I'll all spec scan it, and say something along the lines of, are you sure you want to do that? Or pre-measuring, or asking if your opponent is within 12 inches, and see if they could work that out for why they might not want to be. I feel like the vast majority of the time, unless the opponent's really not paying attention, then your opponent's going to ask, is there any reason that I should not want to be there? in which case I think it gets into the territory of maybe being a bit deceptive if they've basically asked you if there's anything that you could do when they're arriving from reserve 
and you decline to tell them. Moving on, pretty much an equal number of people at around about 35% state that they would sometimes warn their opponent, though not always. I think this is one of the reasons why it's quite a good example as a bit of a grey area, as it genuinely would feel acceptable not to warn people in some situations to me, even though the vast majority of the time I think I probably would. I think there's a fair bit of overlap between these, and I feel like the more reasons that you have not to warn them, the less likely people will be to do so. First up, out of this section, the biggest chunk of people out of this said that they would warn them in a casual game, but not in a tournament or a competitive one. That's 16% of people, so almost half of this category. A lot of people basically saying in a tournament the expectation is to know your enemy and that you're playing to win, and unless the opponent actually specifically asks about stratagems, then you don't have to go through every single stratagem in the book, as that would take far too much time on top of explaining what your army does. Even within tournaments there does seem to be a fair bit of variation, a lot of people say they'd be a lot less likely to warn their opponent about Auspet Scan if they were playing on a top table game that had a chance for whether or not you might win the event. That doesn't really surprise me to be honest. I guess top table games do have a bit more of a reputation for being a bit more ruthless and less forgiving. Where I guess a lot of people are a lot more willing to be a bit more chilled if they're just going to be finishing midfield anyway. On top of that, a lot of people said it would really depend on your opponent's attitude and perhaps just how respectful, polite or otherwise nice they've been over the course of a game. I guess that certainly makes sense from just the point of view of reciprocation. Certainly if you feel they've pulled a similar sort of gotcha move on you earlier in the game, I can see the logic in not necessarily extending the same courtesy to them. A few people just brought up general player reputation as well, whether or not they're known for being a bit on the hardline side or they've had a lot of similar games with you, where they've been very chilled about that sort of thing themselves. Also, with what sort of opponent it was, a lot more people would warn a newer or obviously less experienced player, but less likely to warn someone who clearly knows their way around 40k very well. I guess with Auspet Scan in particular, that one's been around for really quite a long time now, since the Space Marine Codex towards the start of 8th edition. A lot of people will have played Space Marines an awful lot since then, and should be well aware that that one exists in particular. I'm not sure if necessarily the same holds true for other stratagems though, it may be more obscure codexes that have released more recently. Perhaps alongside that, a lot of people said they were less likely to warn the player if they actually happened to play the army themselves. Say for example, if you know a player has his main army as space marines, then it just seems a bit unlikely that they don't know that all spec scan exists in general. It very much seems like a bit of a grey area, and might just vary game to game, player to player, and even where the game might be happening within a tournament. Some other ideas said that they might be more likely to warn their friends, and others might be less likely as they know that they can take it. A couple of people said that they wouldn't give any warnings if they'd made the same mistake twice within a game. I guess that's fair enough. You couldn't really claim that they weren't informed if that was the case. And also potentially based on the game state itself, maybe being more likely to warn the opponent if they're clearly getting thrashed, and maybe a bit less likely to be lenient if the other player is absolutely dominating the game anyway, and a swing like this might make the game more interesting. Next up is the group of people who would aim to talk through common gotchas pre-game. A quarter of people said that this will be their primary strategy, though I think in reality that this proportion will be a lot higher. Out of the people who said that they would always warn their opponent, a lot of people said that they'd also aim to talk through common things like this pre-game as well. In general in 40k, you typically talk through different people's rosters at the start of the game, and I think it is pretty common practice for people to mention a couple of power move stratagems that they're quite likely to take advantage of and this approach seems to be particularly popular in a good practice in tournaments, making sure that both players feel like they're on the same page right from the start of the game, and no one's being misled from lack of information. It's quite easy to do for some of the more common things, but running through every single potential gotcha stratagem will be a lot harder work, and just not really possible with the reams of options that a lot of people have. So within a pre-game discussion, there's definitely different levels that you can take things to. Quite a few people actually said that they even went to the effort of printing out a short cheat sheet of common stratagems to give to their opponent. That way it saves a fair bit of waffle pre-game and gets the game going a bit quicker, and again gives them a quick chance to access the information, so you can't say it wasn't warned if it springs up later. Within people who describe this as their primary strategy, the majority of them, 15% out of the 25, would not generally warn the opponent or allow takebacks if the opponent forgot the stratagem later in the game basically with the attitude that you've already been fully informed of the information, so if you make a misplay later in the game, then it's exactly that, and you don't have to feel too bad about pulling the move on them if you've already told them that it could come up later. I feel that's maybe one of the reasons that it's particularly popular to do this at tournaments, 
as it kind of opens up the opponent to falling foul of power play gotcha type moves, but also in a way that doesn't really leave them a lot of room to wiggle out of it. It's hard to get around the logic of, I told you I could do that at the start, you forgot it, so I'm going to do it now. I think in general most people would agree it's fairly good practice to roughly let the opponent know what sort of common rules are going to come up through the game. It seems like a decent way to sort out contention before it even starts, so it seems like quite a nice way of keeping everyone on the same page to me. While pre-game discussions are good though, I would say that I don't think that they're 100% foolproof. You're not realistically going to be able to talk through 100% of every codex before the start of the game, so niche stratagems might be left out, or the opponent just might not understand exactly what some of the explanation means, so I feel like it could still leave some grey areas. Finally, it sounds like only the smallest group seemed like they wouldn't warn the opponent under any circumstances, though obviously the big section that has depends on context has a big range within it, people who usually wouldn't and people who usually would. It is kind of interesting that while there's absolutely nothing wrong with this rules as written, this group really does seem to be in the vast minority, as I guess it only comprises of statements that didn't have any sort of caveat, like I usually wouldn't warn them, but I would warn them if they were a newer player. There's quite a lot of qualifying statements explaining their decision. A few people said the best way to learn is through your mistakes, which I guess isn't wrong, though I think you'd need to play quite a lot of games to be familiar with every codex's gotchas. It just maybe seems a bit of a painful way to learn 40k for me, if you're not going to go through pre-game discussions and things. Other thoughts are that otherwise the stratagem would almost never get played, which I guess is kind of true. If the opponent's always reminded at all times of all spec scan, they're unlikely to put their unit there unless it's actually going to still be the best choice for them. Other thoughts were that you could explain why it happened and educate your opponent, and thoughts that as it's just a game you can just play by the rules and it shouldn't be taken too seriously by either one of the players. All that's happened is that someone slipped up and lost a few model soldiers. It was interesting though that almost as many people who said this also specifically had people saying that if you never warn people then you're a bit of a jerk. I'm not sure I literally go that far myself, but I do think it's a bit more polite to either talk through things pre-game or not necessarily play it this way in every single game, particularly if you're playing a bit more casually and it might make the game into a worse experience for both players. I guess it just kind of shows that some people have some quite strong feelings about this. I wouldn't be too happy to have a gotcha move pulled on them like this, particularly if it seems kind of clear that they don't know that the rule exists, otherwise they would have moved differently. Another thing that came up a bit from time to time that I didn't really ask about was how you actually react to the gotcha moves. I don't think there's really enough data to talk about what most people tend to do, but it seems that you can also display different levels of etiquette or politeness to your opponent. If someone did pull, say, a surprise stratagem out that massively changes the game, and you had no idea that it existed beforehand. I guess the single most polite or passive option would just be to take the mistake and accept it, chalk it up to experience and come back next time, though I guess by having no pushback at all it might just mean that the game has just been decided then and there, and it's not really the best outcome. Otherwise, I guess your other options are to politely ask to move things differently, explain that you didn't know about the stratagem and you wouldn't have set up your unit there if you'd not known about it, I feel like this is also pretty reasonable, particularly if it was something that you didn't know about, though I guess might be considered a level less polite than just leaving it and accepting that you've made an error. That way it kind of puts the onus on your opponent for whether or not they're going to let you, and I guess at least some people might feel some pressure to let you get away with it, just to preserve general good humour in the game for someone who's asking nicely. And otherwise maybe not quite as intentionally. I've seen at least a few occasions where the opponent might just get very sulky, and make the person who's utilising the gotcha move feel like a jerk which I guess in some ways might be almost kind of justified if you've let them get away with something very similar themselves and they don't extend the same courtesy to you, but on the other hand definitely isn't particularly good form, even if you feel that the other person was behaving pretty unsportsmanlike to pull a move like that on you, I guess it shows that you're not being particularly sporting yourself either. I guess depending on the context and how casual it was and how new the other player was, you might also be tempted to go a lot harder on any other mistakes or gotcha moments that the opponent triggers themselves. I feel if you go after someone fairly punitively for a gotcha type move, you can probably expect the same sort of thing right back at you if you do slip up later in the game. I think some of the most surprising replies to the post though, were perhaps some of the ones that talked about the consequences that had unfolded after an all-spec scan, and it genuinely sounds like that one stratagem and misunderstandings from it have at least ruined at least one friendship and maybe a few more. It does kind of beg the question that if one player or the other player really isn't going to be happy about it, then is it really worth it to you to actually do the stratagem in the first place, 
even if it is 100% justified, and you're fully entitled to within the game rules. My own personal opinion is that usually the time it's probably not going to be, and even at tournaments I think it will be a bit of a trade-off. I often would just generally rather not have the hassle of having an annoyed opponent for the rest of the game. And I've certainly personally had a few times where I've gone to use a stratagem, or maybe make another slightly gamey move, and then wound up backing down because it's just upset the person so much. I guess my own philosophy is a bit more that it might or might not affect the outcome or result of the game, and even if it does, is losing a game of Warhammer really worth having a falling out with the other player over? I guess often I'd tend to be a bit passive on this, but then I suppose if everyone did that, he might just be handing a whole load of positive reinforcement to the people who sulk the most after something doesn't go their way. Otherwise though, I think in general you don't really want to have the reputation as the person who punishes everyone with gotcha moves whenever you play them. Definitely could be something that contributes to people being less likely to want to play you. And I did find the couple of stories about people having genuine falling outs about these sort of stratagems as a little bit tragic. There was one guy who basically said that he was a newer player to Warhammer and someone punished him incredibly hard with this stratagem and just made them lose the game out and out there. It wound up with him just not getting on with that person anymore in the future, and I think dropping out of the hobby altogether. Again, I guess I can kind of see that on both sides. A Warhammer game does feel like a silly reason to fall out quite that much, but I guess how you treat people in a game does kind of speak for people's respect for each other. And it certainly doesn't seem enormously friendly for someone just to stomp a newer player with a rule that they had no idea even existed, and perhaps turn a game into a bit of a write-off. Anyway, hope that's provided at least a little bit of food for thought. I did find it a bit surprising just how much complexity there could be just in one single interaction in a game of 40k. And it's been pretty interesting to look over how a bunch of people would respond to one of the grey areas. In any case, I look forward to hearing all your thoughts and comments down below. How would you respond to the situation and why? If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k stuff coming, with new videos out just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. Channel patrons get a few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.